Well, I can honestly say I did not enjoy this one little bit. That's about all I have to say. I hope it's over soon. This is Pena Palace. Welcome to Pena Palace in Sintra, Portugal. In this video, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about Pena Palace to help you decide if you want to bother seeing this wonder of Portugal or if you should skip it. Sintra is known as one of the most beautiful cities in Portugal. Located just outside of Lisbon, its fairy tale castles and colorful towers have attracted visitors from around the world. A few short years ago, Sintra was relatively unknown, seeing only a handful of travelers. But the word is out now, and even during the shoulder season, the crowds are fierce. The small streets of Sintra are packed with cars, and the famous palace sees 400 visitors every half hour, who weave their way through the halls in a cramped but orderly fashion. We recently visited Pena Palace and booked a timed entry to see this eye-popping palace created in a mishmash of colors and styles. This is our experience. Off we go to see Pena Palace. Traffic jam. So traffic in Sintra is crazy. So I recommend getting a tuk-tuk. It's a fun way to get up to all of the attractions. And uh, you can weave through traffic a little bit better, I think. You can walk, take the bus, taxi, or Uber up to Pena Palace. Parking is nearly impossible and traffic is terrible. Unfortunately for us, our Uber kept getting delayed and canceling. So we had to hop on a tuk-tuk that cost us 40 euro. Yes, 40 euro to make it up in time for our timed entrance. It takes more than 30 minutes to get there from the city center due to the traffic. And then it's another 15 minute walk. So give yourself at least an hour or more. Our driver actually told us she spent two hours in traffic the other day. So I guess we were lucky. Ubers cost seven euro, but they don't like to go up as traffic is so heavy. We just barely made it for our timed entry. It took 35 minutes to get up here on a tuk-tuk, which cost us 40 euro. If we waited for our Uber, we wouldn't have made it. And then we got dropped off and had to run up for a 15 minute walk. Uh, it was already 20 after. We made it up here in seven minutes. We ran, I'm exhausted. But we got our timed entrance at the Sintra Palace. Okay, this crowd is huge. And then I just read that they allow 400 people every 30 minutes. And if you are five minutes late, you don't get to come in. If you are early, you don't get to come in. So make sure that you have walked up, walked through the gate a good half hour at least before your entry time, and then you can come up to the palace for your timed entry. So you can go into the gate anytime on the day of your ticket if you want to stroll around, which I wish I knew. Something I didn't realize, I thought I couldn't get onto the grounds until 4.30, so that's why I just was coming for 4.30. If I would have not got here early, I would have not got my timed entrance. I had read that this is a pretty miserable experience and I'm uh, totally agreeing. We're just standing in line. We haven't even got into the palace yet. I have my 4.30 timed entry and I guess we'll get in around five. And apparently I'm in line the entire way through. So, I wanted to do this. I didn't want to skip it, but I just really wanted to see what it was like, because uh, you never know until you go. This is the weirdest experience. We're just shuffling along. Crowd behind us, crowd in front of us, crowds all around us. Take a quick picture and walk along. You can't pass anyone. You can't do it at your own pace. You just walk through. Yeah. It's one queue after another. <laughs> so 
so we were going to turn around, but we decided to stick it out and see what the view is like from the top. So I hope it's worth it, because it's a slow process. We bought our timed entry tickets in advance with Get Your Guide for 14 euro, which let us skip the line to purchase tickets, which can also be very long. Once inside, we weaved our way through the different rooms that date back to the 1800s to the 1900s. We chose the end of the day time slot, which is less busy than the rest of the day. It was still jam packed, but once we finished inside the castle, the crowds outside were a little less than expected. So it's gotten a little bit better now that we hit the outdoors because everyone was getting their Instagram shots outside. So the crowds inside have tapered off. I think people just wanted to get that one shot. So now I think I can walk through without the crowds for the second half of this tour. We'll see how it goes. The latter half of the tour was much better as a lot of the crowd gave up and went outside for their Instagram and TikTok photos. So Dave and I continued to see the different runes ranging from the days of King Ferdinand in the 1800s to King Carlos and Queen Amelie who lived there until 1910. It was then on to the outside to take in the colors and scenery of the Pena Palace. I really cannot stand the travel culture of today. I guess I'm just getting old because I just don't understand everyone just running around taking selfies instead of looking at the architecture. It's such a disappointment. You're walking and then someone will walk in front of you and take a selfie. And all everyone's doing is just taking a picture of themselves constantly. It is a shame because Pena Palace is truly a beautiful work of art. A designated UNESCO World Heritage Site, Pena Palace is one of the seven wonders of Portugal. Its beauty rivals that of Neuschwanstein Castle in Germany, but with girls taking photos in flowy dresses, congesting the views with their selfies, the experience was ruined for us. So I didn't take any video on the way up because Dave and I were sprinting up. We got here at 20 after 4 for our 4.30 timed entry. I didn't realize that the timed entry, you got in through the gate and then had to come up to the castle, which is a 15 minute walk. We made it in seven minutes. So we made it in time and got in. It's, it's quite beautiful. It's a beautiful castle, but I do wish that they would limit it. Even if they could limit it to 200 people per half hour, it could be better. But alas, the world is becoming overcrowded and the more we travel these days, the more we are grateful that we saw most of the earth long before the days of social media. All right, so now we have the long wait for the taxi. I don't seem to have any service here, so I can't even tell if I can walk back. So we're just gonna see what happens. Tuk-tuks cost five euro per person on the way down, and we were surprised that that was quite reasonable. So did we find Pena Palace worth visiting? On one hand, yes, because it is truly beautiful. But on the other, it is so crowded, I wouldn't recommend going inside. I would recommend just getting access to the grounds and seeing Pena Palace from the gardens. If you want more travel tips, make sure to subscribe to our channel because we put up new videos every week and you don't want to miss a thing. So make sure you click on that bell for updates and we'll see you next time.